Suppose you're given the triple integral of negative 2 to 2, 0 to square root of 4 minus x squared, 0 to square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. You're integrating square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. dz, dy, dx. And the question is to convert this into cylindrical and spherical. Okay. <coughs> to cylindrical and spherical. <coughs> All right. Let's start with dz. dz being here means this should be z equal to 0. This is uh, z equal to 4 square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And it's surface to surface, curve to curve, point to point, or value to value. OK, what kind of surface does this give us, you know? It's a sphere. Right? If I square both sides, I guess z squared equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Moving the x squared and y squared to the left side, you get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 4. It's a sphere of radius two. 2. However, if you write it like this, it's not the entire sphere, is it? <coughs> what do you get? You get? You get half the sphere because z is only positive. And then x, z equal to 0, what's that? That means you're collecting all the points that have 0 height, so you get the xy plane. So this integral is telling us that it's integrating starting from the xy plane and it's going up until it reaches the top half sphere. That's what's happening. Now, if you integrate a, a triple integral, when you integrate the, the very inside of the triple integral, that has the effect of adding up everything in the vertical direction. So. Uh, it just adds everything and places it in this two dimensions. So uh, if you <coughs> compute this, what you're left with is dy dx, which is a two-dimensional integral. And it's basically <coughs> like flattening everything. Okay. If you have a flattened out version, uh, then you have to figure out what this gives us. So often, when you try to understand the triple integral's domain of integration, it's good to think of it as a two-dimensional integral, and over that region, you're trying to integrate uh, uh, something uh, surface to surface. Okay, so let's try to figure out what that gives us. So our our attention is now trying to figure out what this is. Okay, first of all, this is really y equals the square root of four minus x squared, right? Just x squared plus y squared. Which is four y squared equal to 4 minus x squared, which is x squared plus y squared equal to 4, which is? Circle radius. Circle of radius 2. Okay. <clears throat> but y is positive, so what are you getting? Okay. Only this part, half circle. Okay. And then your x is from where to where? Negative 2. Negative 2 to positive 2. All right? x is from negative 2 to positive 2. And, and therefore, this is the domain that you get. Okay? See, y equal to 0 is this thing. y equal to this is the half f circle. And because you have dy there, you're integrating upwards. And since your x values vary from negative 2 to 2, you're, you're painting this region going upwards. So here's what's happening. Down here in the xy plane, you have a half circle. and Starting from here, you're trying to integrate upwards until you reach the top half sphere. Okay? So what do you think you're gonna get? What shape are you integrating inside? Just think about a ball, right? You're only using the top half, right? So down down here is gone, right? But also we're cutting this side in half, right? Half of an orange slice. Yeah. Half, it's a half a half a half sphere, right? It's only one side, okay? Where where y is positive. 
So if this was y and that's x, and that was z, you're only doing the one that y is positive. So this, this it's like uh, one fourth of a sphere. Cut the sphere in four parts. Okay. All right. So now let's change to cylindrical. How do you represent it, this in cylindrical? Your r goes from where to where? Zero to two. Because any ray that you draw, it always starts from zero and ends at two. And how about theta? It goes from? Zero to pi over two. Zero to, to no. Zero to pi. Zero to pi, right, 180 degrees. OK, and then if you change a rectangular one into cylindrical, this is replaced by r dr d theta with dz. Right? Yeah. So you, you need this r just because you, you went from this to there. Right, and then in here, I see x squared plus y squared. What do you change this into? r, r squared, right? So you have r squared plus z squared. Okay. Oh, I, I, I need more room here, sorry. Right. 0 pi, 0 2. Now, what do we do about dz? dz is from 0 to this. And uh, this is no good because it's using x and y. We have to use r and theta and z. So what do we do? Uh, OK, so one thing you can do is replace x by r cosine theta and replace y by r sine theta and simplify. But here's a quicker way. 4 minus x squared minus y squared is 4 minus x squared plus y squared, right? What's this? R squared. R squared. So you have from 0 to square root of 4 minus r squared. Okay. All right. Now, when you go to <coughs> spherical coordinate system, uh, you need, instead of r, you have what? Rho squared sine phi. Right? So this entire thing is rho squared sine phi d rho d theta d phi. I, I realize that most books use d phi d theta. It doesn't matter, but uh, let's use d phi d theta. OK. Uh, so first of all, what is what is this in spherical? Well, that's rho squared. Okay, because what is rho? Rho is the distance from the origin. So actually, this entire thing is rho. That's the distance from the origin to x comma y comma z. Right? So that becomes rho. And then uh, you still start from rho equal to zero. That doesn't change. But uh, when you shoot lasers from the origin, what happens? You start from zero. You end up at <coughs> two, right? So the roll goes from zero to <coughs> two. How about phi? Goes from the north pole and up to where? Pi over two. If you're, you, it stops at the equator. Right? So phi goes from zero to pi over two. And then theta, well, theta, if you have the cylindrical coordinates done already, it's the same theta, so it's like this. That doesn't change. So I guess uh, when you go from here to there, one thing that you should take note of is that rho is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay? So if you remember this. And then how did you get the rho squared sine of v? Oh, this is always true when you go from dz, dy, dx into uh, okay. d rho. This is what we call the Jacobian okay. for spherical coordinates.